powers this to deep right field. No doubt about this one. Kill the showers. Croft under this out to left. Jackson on the run near the line, dives. Oh, he made the catch. That's as good as it gets right there. That Sent the other way, right through line. Fair ball. Mitchell comes home. Will miss on his way home. Around third, Peterson. The throw's nowhere near in time. Davis caught, clears the bases for Iowa. Gets a hold of this, deep center. Rob Gillette's at the wall, he's out of room. It's gone. A senior day birth bomb for the captain. And Burford did work his way back into a fastball count. Strike three call. Savory locks him up. It's a stunning day for a rubber match in Oxford, Mississippi. Today's game three for High Point and Ole Miss, who are both looking for their first series win of 2024. It's a shame that this series has to end. It's been so fun. Back with the World Series champ, David DeLucci. I'm Jake Cremata. And Luch, finally last night, Ole Miss, their, their mascot hot. They won 12 to 2. Yeah, that came along. That's exactly what the coaching staff has been predicting. All Ole Miss needed to do coming into this weekend was win four of its six SEC games. Now, obviously, easier said than done, but hey, they got to win last night. Come from behind fashion, 4-3 winner over these Aggies. They checked one of those wins off last night. They did, and it made it feel, to me, like the game today is even bigger for probably both these two teams. And Keith, last night, I feel like we saw a little bit of everything. Both teams had good starting pitching. Both bullpens imploded, but... Uh, the difference last night was Ole Miss did not get the hits they needed to. Iowa had them in the big moment. I think that's exactly right. Little Rock's hitting 296 as a team coming into today. Ole Miss hit 10 home runs in their last two games. I think pitchers better beware today. They better beware, especially if you're wearing an Arkansas Little Rock. Yeah, so, so the pen yeah, game, the right? Yeah, the pen game. That's I need good. To, I need to slouch a little bit. Yeah. Who's, who's is better? I, <laughs> Riser. It's not yeah. close. Okay. I thought you were going to imitate a guy serving him. Tennis ball I probably could have, but it's, I'm not on camera, so it wouldn't have done much good. <laughs> well, I could have grunted. You mean the grunt? Yeah, the grunt. I could, have, could have done the grunt. Yeah. We have a camera in the booth. We, I mean, they can always throw it up here, Keith. You, you know, you know Jim, Jim and David back there. They, they, they will always. Oh, yep. Yeah, yeah, now, now. <laughs> right? Just didn't get the grunt. Yeah. <laughs> you just, we need the grunt. You need. Uh. I would have rather been able to throw it okay. 92 with no effort. Yeah. Much Fair. rather. Fair. If there's a pitcher in this draft who could mirror Paul Skeens' rise to the number one overall pick a year ago, it's this guy, Brody Brecht. And that's what MLB.com says in their scouting report. Luch, it was maybe a little over a year ago you and I sat in this booth with Tim Elko in between us. And we talked about a potential Tim Elko statue. And Tim Elko's too busy hitting home runs in his spring training debut with the White Sox, so he couldn't be here today. But uh, Ole Miss unveiled the captain's statue this week. That's pretty awesome, man. Luke Hill talked a little bit about his portal experience. He was actually asleep when his name hit the portal. And you can imagine what would happen to someone's phone when they hit the portal, especially when you're a highly touted transfer like Luke Hill was. When he woke up, his phone was everywhere, he said. New world of college sports, right? Yeah. Bad time to take a nap. Just an inning and two-thirds for Justin Lampkin, the sophomore. Three earned runs, still responsible for the runners on first and second base. And, Keith, this was two outs, nobody on situation, and all of a sudden Ole Miss, two-run home run, RBI single, they lead 3-0. Yeah, yeah, two outs, nobody on, and it's a left-left. Campbell Smith with the left-handed hitter, obviously Lampkin left-handed throw. He hits him with, with uh, something off speed. And then he can't get out of the inning. And you certainly feel for Lampkin over there in the dugout. Always hard to go out in the second inning. Your team down three nothing. And now we're going to see some. We're going to see some velocity here with Cortez. Chris Cortez coming in. You see seven and two, 42 innings, 59 strikeouts. Scouting report says 97 to 101 on the fastball. Triple I mean, figures. I mean, you want triple figures against. Andrew Fisher, don't you? Well, certainly uh, Jim Slasagel was not going to let Andrew Fisher put this game further or, or get his team further down without making a pitching change. And by pitching his first at bat, Fisher takes outside, ball one. A power breaking ball right there. 
And that's why Fisher, 19 homers this season, 53 RBIs, 55 hits, two. And he gets a hold of this in the right center, tugs it into the gap to the wall. Birch comes home. Luke Hill hits third. He's on his way home. The Aggies aren't going to contest him. What a two-out rally by the Reds. They're hot. 99 mile an hour fastball by Cortez, and that's just being on time. You get your foot down, you get the barrel of the ball. You see this ball's down in the zone, and I mean, Fisher hammers this one. Can't swing it much better than that at 99. Splits the gap. Abulet have just a little bit of trouble picking this ball up. Not much, but a little bit. I think Luke Hill's gonna score either way. And how about a five run inning here for Ole Miss? All started with two outs and nobody on base. Don't get many of those kind of innings. Especially against one of the best pitching staffs in the country in Texas A&M and the third ranked team in the country. All runs scored with two outs yeah. and the second. And it's one thing to score with two outs when it's like the bases loaded, already loaded, and you get the second out, and then you get the, the runs. And this was two outs and nobody on base. I don't care who you're playing. You don't get many five-run innings that start from scratch with two outs. Ross grounded into a double play his last time up. Yeah, and outside the hit-by-pitches, I mean, almost has earned this. I mean, almost has hammered some baseballs this inning. It's not been bloop-type base hits. No errors by A&M. So this is the game we play now, right? The guy throws 100 miles an hour. He goes 3-0 breaking ball, 3-1 breaking ball. I understand why, because Jackson Ross almost certainly had the 3-0 swing. It feels kind of unfair to the hitter. Ross under this, deep left. But Sorrell, a couple of steps in. From the warning track, he makes the catch. It all started with this Burford blast. And Ole Miss put up five runs in the bottom half of the second. On his senior day, the captain goes deep. Everyone up singing Sweet Caroline here in Oxford. Even Keith Kessinger up showcasing the vocals in the booth today. Score by inning, Ole Miss, their first lead today. Six to five over Iowa. Three consecutive innings, so Ole Miss has been able to put together some kind of offense. Iowa hasn't scored since the third, and Austin Simmons back out on the mound for Ole Miss. And facing Michael Seegers to begin, and the first pitch strike. Simmons saw the minimum three batters back in the fifth. That's the first time Iowa's gone in order since last night's third inning. And Seegers floats this down the left field, or right field line. And caught. What a catch. Get the replay of this one. And it was contested. It was <laughs> contested. It was defended well. Put that on the YouTube highlights later. I know that they uh, put those together. He'll be going back and rewatching that catch tonight. <laughs> One and two to Seegers. Single and a walk today. Chases the high stuff and bounces it to Ross. And Simmons has retired four straight. I'm not sure how Seeger reached that ball to hit it. That was way up. And Bulmas steps up, 0 for 3 today. Bulmas, baseball's in the family. His grandpa is the third winningest baseball coach in NAIA. 
Close to Grandview. Lulis Yasinich, 48 seasons as the head coach. He was 80 when he retired. Three NAI World Series appearances. Retired with over 1,200 wins. Say Ben Wilmis picked the mind of a really, really good baseball mind growing up. And Keith, when you grow up around the game like that, I'm not saying you're destined to be good, but good things can happen. Well, it's certainly nice to have help in the family. There is no question. After a game, getting some expert advice is really a good thing. Three and one. And you would know as well. well you know, when you have a gold glove, <coughs> six-time All-Star yeah, six is your dad. All-Star, yeah. yeah. It, yeah. it works all right. Yeah. Name on the wall. Yep. There's a club at, named after his number as well out in right field. In the air to left, Leger makes the catch. And he twists and turn a little bit. He was a third baseman last year, and he's looking pretty good out in left field. Leger turned his back to the ball, then found it again. Sometimes that'll scare you a little bit as an outfielder. Always happy to when you make contact again with the baseball. And Sam Peterson comes up. Three infielders left of the infield for Ole Miss. <laughs> St. Peterson talks in his media days you know, about the pressure and about leadership. He says, you know what, I just try to do my one-ninth. And if every guy on our roster just does, it just does their own one-ninth to make us better, we're going to be a pretty good ball club. Down on the count, nothing in two. Oh, Austin Simmons has been impressive. He has come in filling up the strike zone. A couple of good breaking balls in a row right there to Peterson. Simmons has retired five straight, looking to make it six. Miss fans were very curious to see how much time on the mound Austin Simmons would get. And this is the biggest spot he's been in as an Ole Miss Rebel. The answer is a lot. Pops him up. A mile high for Ethan Groff, the center fielder. Iowa goes in order in back-to-back -back innings for the first time this weekend.